Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your daily Bible class or your commentary on the Bible. Today, we find ourselves in the book of Luke chapter 5. So let's look at it together. But before we do, let's open our time with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for the word of God. We ask your Lord a blessing upon the word and the things that are shared today. We want to thank you, Lord for your wonderful kindness and love. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I've really enjoyed spending these times with you. And the Word of God, of course, is so dynamic. And the life of Jesus Christ is so wonderful. Well, let's look at Matt, uh, Luke chapter 5. It says, And so it was, as a multitude pressed about him, to hear the word of God. He stood on Lake Genesaret, or as Lake of Galilee, and he saw two boats standing by the lake, but there were fishermen had gone from them, and they were washing their nets. So Jesus had all these crowds following him. Now, we're setting up a wonderful encounter. It says, Then he got into the boats, which was Simon's, and he asked him to put it out a little bit further, and he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Now, that was the habit of that day. In our days, uh, preachers often will stand up and preach the Word of God. But in Jesus' day, they would stand to read the Word of God out of reverence, and then they would sit down and teach. So now, when he had stopped speaking, he said to uh, Simon, launch out into the deep and let your nets down to catch, uh, to catch a catch. But Simon said, he said, Master, we toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. So Simon was showing that at night they were doing their their fishing, and often what they would do is they would light a light or a torch, and then the fish would come to the torch, and then they would scoop them up with a net. Well, that did not happen. So this was actually the time of the day that they would not regularly catch fish. But he says, at your word, I'll do that. So um, when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they come and filled both boats, and they began to sink. So here we have Jesus doing abundance. Now remember, it says in John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, I have come to give you life, and I've come to give it to you abundantly. So here we see again Jesus's abundance in action. Well, when Simon, of course, saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. In that moment, Simon recognized his condition. And that's what we need to do, is we need to recognize our condition. And all that were with him were astonished at the catch and they had taken. And there was also, now listen to this, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you're going to catch men. So Jesus used this as an illustration to um, enlist these men, James and John and Peter, to become his disciples. And they brought the boats to the land, and they forsake all and followed him. Right in that moment, they left everything. To follow Jesus. Now, it happened that he was in a certain city, and behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw him and fell on his face and implored him, Lord, if you're willing, make me clean. I love this. Jesus had just called the disciples. He heads off to another city, and he puts his hand on him and touch him. I am willing, and be cleansed. And he was cleansed. Now, I want you to know something. In Jesus's day, lepers would stand off and say, unclean, unclean. This man had broken all protocols to come. And Jesus broke all protocols as well, because he laid hands on him, and that man was recovered. So what happened was, he charged him, he says, don't tell anyone, but show yourself, uh, go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering of, for your cleansing and a testimony of what Moses commanded. Jesus says, what I want you to do is I want to have it authenticated by a 
uh, a ruling authority, someone who is in the business. That's why when you get healing, you should always go and have a doctor to confirm it. The report went around concerning him all the more, and great multitudes came together to hear to be healed of their infirmities. So Jesus, again, using signs and wonders to gain an audience, uh, touched this man and of course, then they came to hear him and also be healed by his infirmity. Now, listen to this. He goes off by himself to pray. Now, I love that. He goes off by himself to pray. Now, on a certain day, as he was teaching, there were Pharisees and teachers of the law and uh, in the town of Galilee, or uh, uh, who had come from every town in Galilee, Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of God was present to heal. So all these leaders, these Spiritual leaders had come from all over to hear Jesus, and the power of God was with Jesus to heal. Isn't that exciting that the power of God was with him? And we should pray for the same thing ourselves. In fact, Jesus says you can do even greater things because he goes to the Father, and we have the resident Holy Spirit living inside of us. And then they brought a man. I love this. They brought a man with who was paralyzed, and they sought to bring him and lay him before him, but they couldn't find any way to get to him because of the fact of the crowd. So what do they do? They go to the top of the house and they dig through the house and, uh, and through the tiles and drop the man down to Jesus. <laughs> I tell you, that's good friendship. Now, when they when Jesus saw their faith, he said, man, your sins are forgiven. Now, I want you to catch something here, okay? The scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, who is this man who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God? Now listen, they hadn't said that, but they perceived it in their hearts. And Jesus perceived in their hearts and thoughts. He answered, why are you reasoning in your hearts? God was using Jesus with the gift of discernment to see what was going to reveal what was going on. And he said, he says, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or to rise up and walk? He says, I'll show you, though, that you, the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. And he said to the man, I say to you, take up your bed, rise up and walk. So Jesus was basically saying, which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven or rise up and walk. Jesus had already said, your sins are forgiven, but to prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that he had the ability to forgive sins, he said the second one. Immediately, the man rose before him. He was lying in bed, took and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God and filled with fear, saying, wow, we have never seen anything like this before. <laughs> that is a wonderful account that Luke gives us about Jesus doing the impossible, but also showing that he is the Son of God, who has the power to heal, the power to forgive sins, and also to create a stir. Because Basically, their reaction was, wow, we've never seen anything like this before. They were amazed and filled with fear because all of a sudden they had never seen anything like this before. They said, these are strange things we've seen today. They'd never seen anything like this before. But remember, they were face to face with Jesus Christ, the God man, the man, God with a face. And I love that. Well, something to ponder about today. My name is Robert Dean Steele. This is your daily Bible class or your commentary on the Bible. You have yourself a great and godly day. And next time we get together, we're going to talk about the calling of Matthew.